legend Prince dead at the age of 57. Prince, one of the most inventive musicians of the modern era, he released a whopping 39 albums over his four-decade career. He produced some of the most iconic hits like When Doves Cry, Purple Rain, and Little Red Corvette. Prince was found dead inside his Minnesota home after being treated for the flu. TMZ broke the news, and the executive producer of TMZ, Harvey Levin, goes on the record from Los Angeles. Harvey, it was shocking when TMZ broke that news today. Shocking to us, too, Greta. Um, I will tell you this. I, I want to go back to what you just said about the flu. Um, that story does not make sense. And, le and, and I'm going to tell you as much as I can right now. We're, we're working on a story that I think we're very close to putting up that I think will give you some context. But let me tell you the backstory of what is not making sense. We broke a story last Friday that Prince had performed in Atlanta. He did fine there. His voice was great. He looked fine. Got on an airplane to go back home to Minnesota. 48 minutes before the plane was scheduled to land, the plane made an emergency landing in Moline, Illinois. He was rushed to the hospital by ambulance, taken to the emergency room, and three hours later, for some reason, then released and went back home. Now, his people told us it was the flu. It is weird that somebody who seemed perfectly fine on stage had gone through a whole set um, an hour and a half later is rushed to the hospital for an unscheduled landing for the flu because the flu you could tough out 48 more minutes so it seems like it had to be something more than that and we're hearing it was and it might provide some context to what happened ultimately uh, today with Prince uh, when he was found dead now I will also tell you that in the last couple in the last 10 days or so he made four trips to Walgreens Pharmacy where he lived. Now, that doesn't sound, you know, spectacular in any sense. But the weird thing about that is he didn't go in, but he was, you know, the last one was last night, just hours before he died. And he was in the parking lot pacing back and forth and really agitated. So, uh, you know, I think there are building blocks here that will ultimately determine what happened. Uh, but I, I just think that it is more than just the flu. All right. Obviously, Harvey, when you give this description and anybody out there is thinking drugs, does he, does he have a history of drugs? Is he someone where there are rumors that he was a drug user? Uh, I, you know, I don't want to get into what, you know, what, what the rumors are, at least with us. Um, there, there, are, there, there, there is a, a trail here, and you know, the question is where ultimately is it going to lead for Minnesota authorities? That's as much as I want to say right now, and I, I apologize, Greta. I just, we are close to putting something up on the site. I just am not ready yet. Okay. On Friday, he has this emergency landing in Moline, 48 minutes outside of when he was supposed to land in Minneapolis. On Saturday, was he miraculously recovered from the flu? Are there any reports how he was on Saturday and Sunday? Yes. Um, on Saturday night, he went to a dance party at Paisley Park, which he actually organized. He knew about our story and was upset that people thought that he was sicker uh, than, than, than he wanted them to think. And so he didn't perform at Paisley at the dance party, but he did get up on stage and he seemed fine. And he said something which is really kind of ominous almost. He looked at the crowd and he said, wait a few days before you waste any prayers. It's kind of an odd statement, wait a few days before you waste any prayers, almost like it's some kind of a premonition. But when he went on stage, Greta, he seemed fine to everybody who was there. All right, he's found this morning in an elevator dead in his home. Do you know who the last person to see him was, when that was, and what the condition he was at that time? I don't. Um, I, I, I think I know who it was. It was, you know, he did not have a lot of people uh, close to him. He had a girlfriend. He has a manager. But a lot of the, even, you know, he always had a tight group. The group was even smaller in the last year or two. So there were not a lot of people in Prince's world, uh, only a few there. Um, so I, I think I know, but I'm not positive. Okay. How big a star was he, Harvey? Oh, my God. I mean, he is in Michael Jackson territory. Um, I don't think there's any doubt. Greta, I will tell you this, you know, we broke the Michael Jackson story, I think, seven years ago. And at the time, we didn't have the metrics for the website that we have today. 
uh, so I can't tell you what the actual number in terms of the interest on it was, but I can tell you this, we've had these metrics for five years, and I looked at what happened once we posted the story. I've never seen anything like it since we started these metrics. It, I mean, that it was unbelievable. We ended up having to do a repair job on our website because it crashed the site at one point and we literally were, were struggling to keep the site up because the traffic was so crazy. People are vitally interested in him, extremely upset, and there aren't a lot of people that are in that Michael Jackson territory. I think Prince is. Or what? You know, it's, it's, it's interesting about him, about when, in the late 90s when I was at CNN, he called me out of the blue. I didn't know him, and he spoke to me for about almost one to two hours. He was all upset about what? record labels. He just All he wanted to do was talk about record labels to me. He's very upset about some dispute about that the artists were having. And so at the end, I said, do you want to do the show? And he goes, no, no, I just called to talk. Well, okay, all I can say to that is I'm really jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, just, it was so out of the blue. I mean, this huge star was just calling to, he wanted to talk to, I guess, to a, a lawyer or something, but he had no interest in going on TV. He, he actually was sort of a low-key guy. I mean, you never, you never heard much about him except for through his art. He's a very private guy. I mean, he was a very private guy. And, you know, the persona that, that some people have, you know, when, when they're out in public where they'll, you know, hold their hand to their head or whatever when they're, when they're out and they don't want to have the pictures taken, he lived that persona. I mean, he really was that kind of secretive, elusive guy. And it wasn't just when he was out in public, which is, was rare. It was pretty much his life. I will tell you one other thing, Greta, that is interesting. He... Um, he had been talking about doing a, um, a, a memoir for uh, several years, and the memoir was going to go up to the Super Bowl performance in 2007. Uh, I am told by people who were close to him uh, until the very end that a month ago, he kind of abruptly said, I got to start this memoir, and he had actually written 50 pages in the last month, and he felt compelled to do it. And the one person I talked to who was around him when this decision was made said, it was really kind of stunning that it was just out of the blue. He said, I really need to write this now. Awesome. Harvey, thank you. Um, and if TMZ does break the rest of the story that they're working on uh, during On the Wreck, we'll bring it to you right here. Harvey, once again, you got the news first. Thank you, Harvey. Good talking to you, Greta.